Round 4, Crash Bandicoot Warped vs. Spyro, Year of the Dragon. What we're looking at here is the third installment of each series, only for the Sony PlayStation. Not even Mario could make a proper sequel on the Nintendo 64, but Spyro and Crash made it this far on the Sony PlayStation. Both these series came a long way trying to improve in their franchise, and now what we have here is the greatest improvements that we've seen from both of these series. Both of these series stuck with the same formula from the beginning and made it into a whole new greater level. These are some of the best games only for the Sony PlayStation, so let's Let's get started. Crash Bandicoot Warped. My major complaint with the first two Crash games is that they felt repetitive, empty, and plain to me. But along came the third installment of the series in 1998, and Naughty Dog gave it all. No more jungle feel. More than just collecting crystals. This is surviving every obstacle you have to face and have more features than any other Crash game ever released. There are a lot more themes in this game. You travel through time in the medieval times, Egyptian era, Arabian times, road thrashing 1950s, Jurassic era, the future and so much more. Crash Bandicoot earned some new moves after winning boss fights that are more than just jumping and the spin attacks. You are now able to do the super body slam, super spin, double jump, sprint like hell, and even shoot a bazooka. Now how epic is that? Sometimes when you're tired of playing Crash, there are some levels that you can play as Coco, just water skiing and riding on a tiger across the Great Wall of China. Anyway, my major complaint with the first two Crash games is that when I finish a level, I can't find myself going back and enjoying those levels. Now you have a time trial mode where if you were to touch one of these babies, a timer will start and all the Wampas are taken away from the level and the boxes have numbers, meaning if you smash one of these babies, you have a certain number of seconds to save. In this time trial mode, you can compete with your buddies to see who can get through the level faster, plus unlock a warp room where you beat the top time in each. The story takes place when Uka Uka, Aku Aku's evil twin brother, was free from many years and went to Cortex to accomplish his duty in dominating the world. Meanwhile, Aku Aku heard of his brother and calls Crash and Coco to come inside. Wait just a minute, how did Coco turn into a mute like Crash? She had decent voice acting in Crash too, just what happened? While Aku Aku was explaining his story with his twin brother, Uka Uka appeared to save Cortex from the depths of space and now was upset that he has failed him twice. Then Crash and Coco went to the new realm called the Time Twister where they can go back in time and yet collect the crystals before Cortex and Uka Uka does. Now in Spiral Year of the Dragon. It has been considered by many as their favorite Spiral game of all time. The reason why Spiral 3 is called Year of the Dragon is because this game was released in the year 2000, also known as the Year of the Dragon in the Chinese Zodiac. This game kept everything that will always let Spyro fans out there remember how actually good the original Spyro series actually was. Throughout the series, you were able to play as a small dragon who can't fly as much, but glides, charges like a bull, and breathe fire. Most sequels in many video games has collectibles or power-ups that forces you to recollect them from the first game. But not Spyro 3, no! You get to keep your abilities from Spyro 2. You are now able to head smash, climb on walls, and most importantly, swim underwater. In my other videos on Spiral the Dragon, you should already know that I claim Spiral 2 as the best swimming mechanics ever in the video game because the controls are smooth, camera isn't loose or broken, and it's really fast paced to swim underwater. And you know what? Spyro 3 has all the swimming features I love in Spyro 2 and put even more of it in Spyro 3. Spyro 3 mysteriously left out many of the characters from the second game but kept Hunter and Moneybags. After Spyro's vacation in Dragon Shores, he returns to the Dragon Realm and mysteriously, Hunters join with him. They were sleeping peacefully on the outdoor fields of Spyro's world with the unhatched dragon eggs until a cloak rabbit girl named Bianca invades the Dragon Realm with an army of creatures called the Rhino and steal all the dragon eggs, bringing back to the sorceress who scatters the eggs throughout the several worlds. After being caught, one of the dragons went after her but unfortunately escaped to one of the holes they came from and none of the dragons could fit in. Spyro, along with Sparks and Hunter being the only one small enough to fit, are sent down to the hole and to find the thieves and recover the dragon eggs. Later in the series, they'll find money bags doing business with the sorceress keeping Sheila, Sergeant Bird, Bentley, and Agent 9 caged up and later will be free as playable characters to help Spyro and join together to stop the sorceress and rescue the dragon eggs. 
You know the drill, it's time to compare and contrast. What Crash 3 and Spyro 3 have in common is that they both have collectibles and a couple of new ones too. Crash 3's objective is to reach from point A, collect the crystals, and reach the point B. You can collect the gem by smashing all the boxes in each level, and obtain a relic when you complete a time trial mode and beat the best time in each level. Spyro 3 kept the gems in the game and used them to buy pathways and new characters. The series changed the main collectibles once again, from breaking dragons from their statues, obtaining talent talismans and orbs, and now collecting dragon eggs. Once you find one of the dragon eggs, they'll hatch, show off their personality, and then transport it back to the dragon realm. It's kinda weird that they're already given a name after they hatch, and shouldn't they be given a name by their parents' decision? Now let's look at the difficulty and challenge. Though Crash is a linear platformer that uses the same method from point A to point B, it was fun to face different enemies and environments. Also, not all the levels are reaching the point A to B, but you can ride on a bike, shoot down zeppelins and planes on the air Plane, and so much more. There are a lot of obstacles trying to get 100% than some of the levels that are really tough. Some of the levels have more than one gem and it's not all about smashing the boxes but rather look in the secret area of a level to find the gem. Like all the Crash games, you'll die a lot in order to memorize all the level designs. It's really a pain to get 100% but worth the challenge. If you want to get your platforming skills to the test, you should play Crash 3. Spyro 3 on the other hand has the duty in collecting gems which are scattered everywhere and dragon eggs. In collecting the dragon eggs, you can find them in a lost certain area and each of them has some tasks for you to do and some of them put you in a mini game and none of them are repetitive. Just a new challenge and a new experience. And believe me, there are a ton of mini games that will keep you occupied in this game. For one, you can play the new characters that you freed from money bags. One of my favorite mini games in Spiral 3 is when Spiral is skateboarding which is better than the Tony Hawk series and made it much cooler with the dragon doing insane tricks. And another one where you're fighting against Chinese dragons. That's epic. For the designs, minus Crash 3 being linear and Spiral 3 being non-linear, Crash 3 is taking place in the time traveling world, meaning that you can go back in certain levels in certain time zones. And man, Naughty Dog did a very good job in making certain levels fit in each time zone slash settings. To me, the level designs are more memorable than anything that the Crash series has ever had. Spiral 3 designs, I really can't say they improved because some of them look similar from the last game, but other than that, it's much more bigger than Spyro 2, for sure. They took the definition of non-linear into a whole new level. Many of the level designs are straight out out of any fantasy or fairy tale you can find. From clouds, beaches, castles, fields, and more, this is an adventurous platforming fantasy. Now let's look at the character development. Crash 3's characters are pretty fair, but the only characters that has personality are the bosses. Nothing really changes when you continue the game, but let's face it. Spyro's games from Spyro 2 really did focus on the story and the character development, and Spyro 3 took it to a whole new level of the story. I really did love the cutscenes of Bianca not having the strength to harm Spyro or Hunter, but rather tries to threaten them. Her master, the sorceress, begins treating her badly, and she begins to decide to become more of the ally side with Spyro and Hunter. It's pretty cute to see Hunter having a thing for Bianca, but out of all the characters that improved the most, it was Bianca. But I was very disappointed that Alora was taken off the game until I saw her at the the ending of the game which made me very happy. In Crash 3, after completing all five levels of the chamber, the six button will appear and it will send you to the boss. Bosses like Tiny, Dangle Dial, and Dr. Nefarious Trophy were easy bosses to for Crash, but it was neat to have Coco have her own battle against Dr. Engine. Then the boss battle between Crash and Cortex and Aku Aku versus Uka Uka fighting each other was even more memorable than any boss fights in Crash Bandicoot series. Spyro 3 bosses, I have to admit this is is not as memorable as the bosses from Spyro 2. But most disappointing of all was the final boss battle with the sorceress. What the hell is up with this music? It ruined the epic feel of the game. Also, when you enter her realm and collecting all the gems from the secret world, you fight her for the second time, and it was even more disappointing than the first. Another disappointment I have in Spyro 3 is, is having to save other creatures from the other world was even less epic than the second game. In Spyro 2, you enter a world and you see a cutscene of the problem of the creatures the world to, and you save them. Here in Spiral 3, you just dive into a world and there's no cutscenes and there's no reason why you should give a damn about rescuing the world, which ruined the epic feel. But that's not my least favorite part in Spiral 3. My least favorite part in Spiral 3 has to be playing those other characters than Spyro. I admit it, I hated it. Sheila wasn't that great to play, Sergeant Bird was too slow to fly, Agent 9 was just a shooter that's tough to move and aim, and worst of all is Bentley. 
because he is the slowest and in short and rage with his attacks. And Sparks was not fun at all. To me, playing other characters besides Spiral himself almost ruined the game for me. Playing Coco in Crash 3 was great, but other characters in Spiral was not that good. And for that reason, Crash Bandicoot Warp is a little better than Spiral the Year of the Dragon is because playing other characters besides Spiral himself. God damn it! I hate it! So my score for Crash Bandicoot Warped is a strong 5 fingers out of 5, and Spiral Year of the Dragon, an average 5 fingers out of 5. So for that, Naughty Dog is the winner of round 4. Sorry, Spyro fans. As much as I like Spyro 3, I have to say that Spyro 2 is the best of the series because Spyro 3 put too much and Spyro 2 was heavily improved compared to the first one. But Crash Bandicoot Warped had to be the winner because it was the highest peak of the series. So thank you everybody for watching this part of Naughty Dog vs. Asomniac Games and please stay tuned when we go see the next console, the PlayStation 2.